Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, I'm going to be talking about weighted average, which is the final, the fourth inventory costing method. And I'll also talk about financial statement effects of costing methods, okay? I'm on page 126 of your course pack. So if we look over here with the weighted average, we've talked about specific identification in LIFO and FIFO, and weighted average is our final inventory costing method. And so what we're going to do with weighted average is we're going to figure out each time we make a sale, we're going to calculate the weighted average cost per unit. So how do we do that? Well, we figure out the total cost of the goods that we, we could sell that we have on hand. What's the cost of all the inventory that we have on hand divided by the, the number of units that we have on hand. And then that gives us the average, right? Total cost divided by total units gives us the average. It's like saying, well, I went to Walmart and I bought a hundred dollars. I bought 10 t-shirts for a hundred dollars. On average, how much did you pay for each t-shirt? $10. How'd you figure that out? Total cost divided by total units. The same here. Weighted average costing would be a good option to use for a company where they make very similar products. They make very similar products. We'd want, that would be a good idea to use weighted average costing. There's not significant variances or different significant variety in the costs. Okay. So same thing before, same beginning inventory, same purchases, so on and so forth. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the next page because that's just the same as it has been before. So let's go ahead and set up our table. Tables are fun. Tables help you. Okay. I love tables. We got date. We got purchased. We got cost of goods sold. And then we got our inventory balance. All right. So I ate one. We have our beginning. Remember we had the 10 at 91, $910 inventory balance. I ate three. That is not a three. That's a, oh my gosh, that's a three. <laughs> we bought another 15 at 106, which gives us our 1590 plus our 910. Gives us our 2500 right over there. Then on 814, made a sale, right? Well, before, what we have to do is calculate the average cost. How do we do that? Well, here's the total cost of our inventory. How many units do we have on hand? Well, we had 10 here. We had 15 here, 25 total units. This is the total cost of those 25 units and then the 25 units, which gives us on average, it's $100 per bike. And we're told on the 14th that we sold 20 bikes. So the 20 times 100, gives us our $2,000. So then I can come over here and say my 2,500 minus my 2,000 gives me my inventory balance of 500 here, which is the same as saying, well, how many bikes do I have left over, right? Well, I had 25 and I sold 20. So that means I have five bikes left over. So what's the average cost of each bike? $100. So five times the average cost gives us 500 check. All right. So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to pause the lecture video and finish this table through the 31st and also give me the journal entries. So on eight for the 814 and 831, give me the journal entries for that. And uh, assume that on the 14th that we sold each bike for $130 and on the 31st we sold each bike for $150, okay? So pause the lecture video, give it a try, and then come back and check it. All right, so let's take a look to see how you did. So on 817, we bought another 20 bikes at $115 each for 2300, plus that 500 gives us the 2800 here. On the 28th, we bought another 10 bikes at 119, gives us 1,190, plus the 2800 gives us our inventory balance of 3,990 right there. On 831, we made a sale. Now, when we make a sale in weighted average, we have to recompute the average cost per unit. So we have to recompute the average cost per unit. So I take my total cost of 3,990 divided by 35. That's the number of bikes that I have on hand. How did I get that? I had five bikes up here. 
I added another 20 and then another 10. The 5 plus the 20 plus the 10 gives me 35. So then I divide those two. I get $114 per bike. And then I sold on the 31st 23 bikes at a cost of $114 per bike. Gives me cost of goods sold, 2622 All right. Then I have my ending inventory. How many bikes do I have left over? I have 12 bikes left over, right? 12 at the $114 cost gives me 1368 This is my ending inventory balance. How else could I do that? I could have said my 3990 minus my 2622 and gotten to the same answer, okay? All right. So um, now let's take a look at those journal entries. So we debit on the 14th, debit accounts receivable for $2,600. Uh, and then we credit sales, $2,600. Debit cost of goods sold, $2,000, where I get $2,000, straight from here. Credit merchandise inventory, $2,000. On the 31st, debit accounts receivable, $3,450. Credit sales, $3,450. And then on the 31st, uh, debit cost of goods sold, $2,622. Credit merchandise inventory, Twenty six, twenty two. All right. So hopefully you got this right. Let's take a look at financial statement effects of the different costing methods. Okay. So if the purchase prices don't change, right? If they don't change, which isn't very realistic, but let's assume that they didn't change, then each inventory costing method would give the same amount. Give the same amount to cost of goods sold and in in ending inventory. But prices do change. Why do prices change? Well, think inflation. Think that supply, you have different suppliers and maybe those suppliers change their prices. Okay. So because prices change though, inventory methods will almost assign different costs to cost of goods sold and ending inventory. So when we have a situation when purchase costs rise, so think inflation. What that means is that first in, first out, will assign the lowest, okay? We'll assign the lowest to cost of goods sold. And, and, it, and because of that, it gives us the highest gross profit. Now, why is that? Well, if, if I look at first in, first out, right, look back on page 123 right over here, look at how we calculated cost of goods sold. We looked at the, end, the, big, the inventory that we acquired first is the, are the ones that we sold first. And so we start here at beginning and then work our way down, okay, work our way forward in our table. So the inventory that we acquire the ones that we sell first with first in, first out. Well, if prices are rising, the inventory that we first acquire is going to cost less than inventory that we later acquire. And you can see that. Look at, we got the bikes at $91 and then 106, then 115, then 119. What's happening to the prices of these bikes? They're increasing, right? So because of that, look at cost of goods sold is lower. Okay. Cost of goods sold is lower because we assign the oldest inventory or the inventory that we acquire first to cost of goods sold, which then as cost of goods sold is lower and cost of goods sold is an expense on the income statement. That means our cost of goods sold is lower. That means our expenses are lower. As expenses go down, income goes up. Okay. So that's what I'm saying over here. Gives us the highest gross profit. Remember, gross profit is our net sales minus our cost of goods sold. Okay. LIFO, on the other hand, assigns the highest amount to cost of goods sold. Well, let's look at LIFO, what we did on page 125. Look at what's happening, right? Is again, the prices are rising. So which ones are we saying that we sold more of, right? On cost of goods, on the 14th, we're saying we sold the most recent inventory first. Well, if prices are rising, the most recent inventory is the most expensive. So that's our, so our cost of goods sold goes up. Look at our cost of goods sold here for the 14th for LIFO, it's 2045. For FIFO, it's 1970. Higher cost of goods sold, lower gross profit, and then lower net income. All right. 
Now, a lot of companies like to use LIFO because it gives a temporary tax advantage. I told you that your taxes, corporate taxes, are a percentage of your net income. Which one are you going to choose? LIFO, FIFO, weighted average specific identification. You can choose if prices are rising, right? You're going to choose LIFO because it reduces your net income. And then your taxes are a percentage of a smaller number, which means you pay less taxes. So it gives you a tax advantage. Okay. Weighted average will give us results somewhere in between LIFO and FIFO and then specific identification, which really, if we think about the matching principle, the matching principle says we want to, as best as we can, right, match expenses and revenues in the same accounting period. Well, of the four, specific identification best satisfies the matching principle because it's saying we sold this exact box of markers and we sold this exact box of markers for $3 and we know the exact cost, which it was $1. So that best satisfies the matching principle. But again, that is impractical for high volume products. Specific identification for big, expensive, custom-made products, low volume, think car dealership. But specific identification would best satisfy the matching principle, okay? Now, if we have a deflationary situation, deflation where prices are, prices are declining, the reverse occurs between LIFO and FIFO. All inventory methods are acceptable, but you have, but the companies need to disclose which one they use per the full, full disclosure principle. When we talk about some advantages of each method, FIFO will assign an amount to inventory in the balance sheet that appro approximates its current cost. Okay. That's because the most recent costs with FIFO show up in ending inventory. So ending inventory says this is our most recent cost. Okay. And FIFO mimics the actual physical flow of goods for most businesses. You know, if you think about it, it wouldn't be like, wow, we got some, we got some shipments in, right? We're, we got some new shipments in. We're just going to remove some of that beginning inventory from the shop floor, put it back in the warehouse and then sell these new ones, right? That'd be the idea of LIFO, right? Where the most recent inventory is the one that we sell first. That doesn't really make very much sense. What it'd be more like is companies get in shipments, they put them on the shop floor to sell them, right? So FIFO mimics the physical flow of the actual flow, the physical flow of goods for most businesses, okay? LIFO assigns an amount to cost of goods sold that approximates its current cost. Because remember, the most recent cost, most recent inventory shows up in cost of goods sold. Well, that's the most recent cost. And so because of that, compared to FIFO, it better matches the cost with the revenue, so it better satisfies the matching principle. Weighted average would be useful for those companies that have very similar products, and it tends to smooth out any big swings in costs. And specific identification, as I was saying, would be the optimal for the matching principle, but it's not used for high volume products because it's impractical. All right. All right. So I'm going to end this lecture video now. And in the next series of lecture videos will be all practice problems. So we'll pick up here on the next lecture video. Thank you so much.